Okay, guys. Good evening. I uh, I welcome you guys today. I don't know. Can everybody hear me? Good evening. Can you guys hear me? Can somebody say something? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. I can hear you from my end, sir. Okay. 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 <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to start. These are eight oh five. Okay. So this class was uh, meant to be just yesterday. Uh, just like I, as I proposed. So it was just to be meant to be just yesterday, but uh, some persons was uh, chatting me privately that they missed the class due to one or two things. So I decided to reschedule this class for today. But I'm not going to be saying much more as we did yesterday. So I'm going to be doing something like a summary in today's class. Okay, so... Uh, but I'll try my best to explain at least everything we did yesterday. Okay. So I I just want to say one or two things before I start the class. Uh, people should not be taking some knowledge for granted, especially when it's coming free. Okay. Uh, there are, there are many skills I have which I learned some of them for fun. I learned uh, some of them for the money. Okay. So now if you watch. The situation of the country you know that you need money even though you need to learn some skills for fun okay so i learned <clears throat> sorry i learned fire alarm system not because i want to be a firefighter or whatever you understand i enjoy learning new knowledges okay and apart from that i'm having fun when doing my fire alarm system installation i also make money from it everybody needs money okay so no matter how much cctv is paying you no matter how much uh insulin speaker is paying you uh intercom is paying you uh networking is paying you if you still have other skills that can add more money to your pocket i think it's, it's a good something right yeah it's something that is nice so anytime it's your opportunity to learn a skill just learn it and to be sincere i've gotten this experience that especially in Nigeria, I don't know about other countries, we don't have much people that does this fire alarm system installation. I've been on site and I've seen what people are doing. That is the installation they are doing. And within me, I know that this uh, installation will not work. And to be precise, after they finish mounting their panel and everything, it will still not work. Okay, so imagine after doing installation, having just one cable coming out of your manual core point, it will not work logically. It will not even work because even from the connection, you know that uh, the 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 system is not going to work. Okay, so I see some of this in our site, and I said, okay, why not? Let me just throw light on this. Even though this class is just a kind of uh, visual kind of discussion, not practical. We're going to do practical, but. I don't think it's going to be a free version because we need to get devices and do the practical that is for those people that are interested okay but i'm going to show you guys the connections here just visually okay using my uh, uh presentation slide okay so let's just start let me just explain a little bit what fire alarm system is okay so the fire alarm systems are designed to alert us of any fire emergency so that we can take action to protect ourselves to protect the staffs and also to protect the general public okay so and this fire alarm system can be found or maybe can be installed in your offices you can install this fire alarm system in factories in public buildings you know in hotels even in your home in fact if i'm um, the president of my country i'll try and make it a mandatory that at least 70 percent of people or if not everybody should have a fire alarm system in their homes in their offices because is uh <clears throat> it's a device 
that uh, helps you a lot, especially in terms of fire emergencies. Okay, it's a device that helps you a lot. So I believe people should have this in their home, even though some people don't really know the real importance of it. But I believe that people should have uh, fire alarm systems in their home offices because of fire outbreak. Okay. All right. So the second thing I'm going to be talking about is uh, what is the main brain about this fire system so i'm going to be sharing my slide and i'm going to show you guys some of the, the devices that make up the fire alarm system so like i said initial you don't need to learn fire alarm system to be a firefighter okay just learn it for fun or learn it to add more box to your pocket okay and like i said like in my country nigeria we have less people that has this knowledge so most times people are even looking for installers on fire alarm system and they end up getting those people that don't even have knowledge on it they just mess up the installation and the system is just there installed in the factory home or wherever but they are not working and when you call somebody to come and start doing troubleshooting it costs them twice okay so having knowledge on this i believe is going to really help you a lot okay so i'm going to share my slide now let me explain we have different type of fire alarm system we have the conventional we have the addressable we have the intelligent and we have the wireless but i'm going to focus more on just three which is the most popular ones and the ones i've really installed okay so i'm going to be talking on the conventional i'm going to be talking on the addressable and i'm going to be talking on the wireless okay so just brief uh explanation on them and show you guys how the connection can be done okay so i'm going to be sharing my screen now and uh one person should just say uh hello if you are seeing my screen so please when you see my screen just say hello let me be sure i'm presenting it Uh, you guys see my screen? Yes, sir. Hello, we can see it, sir. Okay, okay. So I'm going to be using this particular slide to explain conventional fire alarm system. Okay, so the brain of this whole system is a central hub, which is the uh, panel. Okay, so we call this the control panel. So it's the central hub for all these devices so it's central hub for all of these devices okay now in conventional fire alarm system uh, let me use conventional fire alarm system CFS so in conventional fire alarm system your devices are being looped together in different zones so you loop multiple devices to a particular zone so like in this panel we can have a uh, like zone one we can have zone two zone three and so on and so forth depending on the number of zone panel you have okay now inside the same panel you have another block which is for the sounder so you can have sounder one and sounder two okay and you can have your port there's another block here which is for the power okay <clears throat> excuse me so which is for the power and other blocks inside that are used for different functions all right now in conventional like i said earlier your devices are being connected together in zones so each of these zones can take up to 13 14 15 16 to 17 devices 
depending on the type of panel you buy there are panels that can take less than that there are panels that can take more than that so i've used some technology that when i sit uh 13 uh 13 devices it starts showing fault okay but some of them you can have up to 17 devices on one zone and it will still work fine that is for conventional fire alarm system okay so i'm going to be chaining these devices in two zones all right so uh this is a uh, this is called a manual call point or you can call it a break glass okay okay star star we can we can see we can see the screen again star okay you can see the screen yes sir i can see it from my hand here okay please who again cannot see the screen sorry Please, we again cannot see the screen. I need a response so we can be fast. I'm going to be ending this video. Yes, sir. I can see it here. Okay, so bro, I think you are having issue from your side. Maybe your network. You can disconnect and reconnect back, please. Thank you. Okay, so okay, so like I was saying, this is the break glass. So it's popularly known as break glass. Most people call it break glass. Most people call it manual call uh, points. Okay, so I will have uh, the the smoke detector so this is the smoke detector we can also have the heat detector i am not saying that this is a heat detector but we have heat detector and we have uh, a smoke detector so this is also a smoke detector but we can still have a heat detector that can be connected together with these devices to your zone okay so the heat detector works on a fixed temperature so you can set a particular fixed temperature when the uh, heat detector detects that this heat has exceeded this particular fixed uh, temperature you set on it, it will yes, it will it will now send signal to your panel, and your panel will now send signal to the alarms outside. Okay, so that's what it does, and it can also work in a rate of change of temperature. So there. Are, maybe weather change temperature you know so depending depend on what kind of device you have okay so uh this is a smoke detector this is a smoke detector now in connecting your smoke detector whatever type of technology you buy you should try and know how the connection is, is being done all these smoke detectors are not being connected the same way so as we will have uh live devices which i'll try my best to make sure that we have a live practical with some of these devices you see that their connection from their base because the connection is being done from their base so most of them their connection pins are different so if you try to do them the same way it will not work so you need to understand the particular technology you have and understand how the connection it is uh, is being done okay so and also most times you can get a particular technology of smoke detector but your panel is not compatible with it so you also note this so that not when you finish doing your installation you will be like ah my 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 uh, installation is okay but i don't understand what's happening maybe the panel will just be showing fault unknowingly even though there's no fault anyway just because it's having a device connected to it that's not compatible with it so you'll be having some kind of false 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 and so on and so forth so me i used to advise if you are buying a particular technology hmm, buy the same devices of that technology like i said you can still buy other uh different technology of devices and still connect it to your panel and it will still work fine but you, you have to be sure that those devices will work with that's your panel i've done some installation that i used almost five different type of smoke detectors on a particular panel and it worked fine okay so just understand the uh, technology you're buying and the compatibility of the devices you'll be connecting to the panel all right so this is a strobe this is another strobe so you can have a you can have strobe in this form you can have also have it in this form so it is spelled strobe 
Uh, sorry, my writing is very, very good. So Stroop, B-E, right? So it is called a Stroop. Now, this Stroop is usually mounted at the exit point. So because of this light, when you have any fault and uh, they send signal to this panel, it sends signal to the strobe and this strobe start blinking this light. Okay, so the light in the case or tells people in the building, okay, this is the exit point. Okay, so the strobe is normally mounted at the exit point so that people, when they are seeing that light uh, flashing, they should know that, okay, this is the exit point. Everybody will be heading towards that way. Okay, so this works the same as this. Then the bell mounted, the bell is, can be mounted at uh, the walkway, like your passage, uh, you know, uh, like steps and stuff like that. So just where you can have uh, a central uh, harmonized uh, noise when the, when the panel sends signal to it. Okay. Then the manual core point, the best place for it to be mounted should always be the door part or exit part that is maybe when you're entering a building you should mount it at the door you understand just where people can easily see the brake glass because the brake glass is manually being broken by a person not the fire so you only use this brake glass when someone have seen that okay we have fire burning you know, but the smoke detectors has not detected the fire okay actually they detect the smoke that comes to it okay but the person that sees this fire coming up can easily rush and break this glass and this break glass will send signal to the panel and the panel will send its own signal to the bell and it will start ringing people cannot evacuate the building okay so before this guy get choked and send signal if anybody sees the fire he can use the manual core point to set up the alarm so that is the function of uh that's the function of the manual core point and the function of every other ones here okay so let me just quickly show you the uh cabling of uh conventional so let me just delete, uh, remove some of this. Please be writing your questions down. You have uh, like 20 minutes to ask me a question after the class. So I'm going to be connecting. So uh, your connection will look this way. Okay. So for your devices, I'm going to connect this particular device into zone. Please, if you on your mic, turn it off, please. Please turn off your mic. Please turn off your mic. Thank you. Okay, so this is how the connection is going to look like. So first of all, from your zone one, you're going to have two cables. Now we'll have a fire uh, alarm system cable, but most times people use the electrical cable like the 1.1 uh, 1 mm, 1.5, 2 mm. Okay, so depending, all will still work fine, but it's advisable we should use the fire alarm cable. Okay, so two cables come this way, the red and the black. It can be red and black, it can be red and uh, yellow, it can be any color, just any color you use, try and remember the color when you are doing your connection. So the cable come this way and continue to the next device, to the next device and ends here. So let me assume that this is my first zone. So let me assume I have up to 13 devices. This is, more, this is 13 devices and I've finished this particular zone. So you end your zone on the last device. You end one particular zone on the last device. Then you connect something called an end of line resistor here.
you connect an end of line resistor to your last device very very important okay now connecting of the next uh, zone so this is the second zone so you're going to come this way this way this way so we have this we have this we have this and remember to add your what end of line resistor here okay end of line resistor here so same thing with the bell so you can connect your bell and your strobe together to sounder one or sounder two okay same thing here you can link these two together to your sounder sorry sounder two so remember two cables So the same thing here, you should have an end of line resistor. R. The same thing here, you should have an end of line resistor. Okay. So this is the connection. This is how your connection should look like. And if you can do this very well, your system will work perfectly. So you can trigger a smoke manually on this, it will send signal. Okay, so if you watch some of the uh, devices, you're having two lights. So when this light is blinking, that means it's normal. When it's showing red light, you're having fault. So some have light. Most, some of them does not have light. Okay, but like all these ones have light. So when you finish your connection, you'll be seeing a kind of either blue light or uh, green light flashing slowly, slowly. That means your device is okay. All right. Now, there's a language we use when, when doing these connections. We say we have an incoming so this is an incoming cable to the manual core point and this is the outgoing cable from the manual core point to the incoming of the first smoke detector then from the outgoing of this first smoke detector to the incoming of the second uh, smoke detector then from the outgoing to the next to the incoming to the outgoing to the incoming so that is how if you can remember this uh uh, this word I use, you can. Uh, it will be quite much easier for you. So incoming, outgoing, incoming, outgoing, incoming, outgoing. So that means at each point of these devices, you are having how I many cables? We're having like four cables coming down, right? So we're having like four cables coming. So this is incoming. And this one is outgoing so that is how uh, a conventional fire alarm system connection is being done okay so next I'll be talking about uh, addressable so I'm going to be using this particular slide to explain addressable so in addressable each of the devices are given a certain address by the means of a deep switch by the means of a deep switch dip dip switch so each of these devices unlike the conventional if you watch would not give any of them name but in addressable each of these devices are configured in such a way that you give them a specific name so you can name this guy you can name this guy uh this is very small let me use sorry so we can name this guy uh, maybe device one, device two, device three, device four, device five, device six, device, you know. So whenever you have a fault, that particular device is going to send his identity to your panel. So if this, if this is an addressable panel, you are going to have uh, something like this. We're going to have a screen here he's going to have a screen that will be displaying all the whole functions so if i have 
this device one if I have device one having fault it's going to send this his identity to the panel now what is the advantage the advantage is instead of okay let me just go back here the advantage is this when you're having a fault in a particular room on conventional it will tell you that you're having fault in a particular zone and mind you in a particular zone you can have up to 10 13 17 devices so that means you need to start checking okay which of these devices has the fault but in addressable it's going to tell you room one device one so maybe this guy this particular small detector is in a particular room so it's going to tell you the device is this is the identity which is room one so you're going to be seeing one here so instead of you trying to scatter your uh, energy you just go directly to that particular room and check what is happening there okay and start your troubleshooting okay so that is one of the big advantage of addressable system so these uh, deep switches are like a miniature switches that are mounted on top of a PCBS and used to make settings on these electronic devices. Okay, so the uh, deep switch is something like this. If you open this panel, you see it. You'll be seeing something like you've seen a switch this way, numbered. Some of them one, two, three, depending on the configuration of the switch. So that's how you look like. So use it to do some some of these uh, some of these are uh, configurations. Okay, so. And some of them too, you use the button on the on the addressable file lab system to do your configuration and assign those uh, addresses to your devices. Also, there are some panels that automatically assign automatically assign addresses to the devices. So once you plug into that, it will be clicking one device one detected, device two, you know, device three, device four. So when you are doing your installation of fire alarm system, you should know your route. You should know where you start and where you end. It's very, very important. If it is possible, get a sheet of paper and do and uh, sketch your design before you start doing your installation. Because after you finish your installation, you need to hand over the system to maybe their IT personnel or any fire person that will be controlling it in that building. You will not be the one doing that. So you need to instruct people on how to do that. So when doing the instruction, you should also give them the design you have made for the installation, which is very, very important. Okay. Now in addressable fire alarm system, unlike the conventional addressable are, are connected in loop. Addressable are connected in loop. So you're going to have a L1, loop 1, loop 2, depending on the panel you have. You're going to have a master. Okay, so I've already explained this is a manual comp point. This is a smoke detector, this is your stroke, you know. So this is this is the other one I've not talked about. This is called a master blaster okay master blaster you put it outside the building not inside the building because this can even deaf someone's ear so it's very loud so most people uh most people that use this are like uh, factories big companies you know you cannot put this on in your home no it's going to if, if you have a neighbor it's going to warn you seriously okay so you use this in big big factory you know where where you have large space that you need uh more people attention when alarm is blowing okay so this master blaster has a has a four cable it has a black and a red so i have a red and a black cable that is being connected to the power and also have uh, two other different colors so it can be green or whatever depending on the uh company okay that is being connected to this master here so like i said it can be any color so this one is for the feed the one that sends signal this one is the one that powers the device okay so in addressable fire alarm system 
I can't see the the, the video board. You can't see what? Sorry. Come again. Say so I can't see the screen from my end. Okay, so sorry for the stop for the stopping you. So like I can't see the the screen from my end. I don't know. I think you are the only person having this issue. Have you disconnected and connected back? Okay, please. No, no, I haven't because I've been trying to uh, kind of grab both my screen. No problem. I'm recording the video. I'm going to send it to you guys when I'm done. So just just pay attention to. Okay, sir. All right. So um. We are my distraction. Uh, so I'm going to uh, loop. We're talking about loop, right? So in addressable, in addressable file alarm system, it is loop, not zones. Okay? It is loop, not zones. So you loop your devices. You loop all your devices together this to this 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 so remember two cables is coming So in addressable file alarm system, you can have up to 90, 100, even 120 something uh, device in one loop. Okay. So remember when I was explaining conventional, I said your last device will be what? Will be terminated with, uh, will be terminated with an end of line resistor. But in addressable is different. Your addressable continues back to the panels. So please, when you are doing your cabling your piping of addressable remember to pipe back to your panel so when you start from the panel and you are putting your points where you mount your devices before the casting of the decking you should still come back to you should have a pipe that still come back from the last device to your panel if not you're going to have a big issue okay so in addressable it returns back to the panel it doesn't just stop uh, at the last device okay so that is the design for addressable fire alarm system i think uh i've tried to explain this even though there are many many other things that can happen in this system i think the practical aspect will be much better so that when you connect it, it not work, you now start troubleshooting because what makes you a professional in your field is your level of troubleshooting. Okay, so whether it is your work or somebody that have done the work, if you enter into a system, what first comes to your mind? Where do you start? You know, that's what makes you a professional in your field. Okay, so the last is uh, is going to be the the last I'm going to talking about is the wireless. So like I said, there's another type of file answer, which is the intelligent type. So it's just an advanced of the addressable, but it's not that common. So I don't think I should be explaining it here, but you can read about it. It's also a nice type of file alarm system. Okay. So uh, the last will be the wireless. Sorry, I don't have devices for you. So, so wireless. So, a uh, uh, wireless fire alarm system still works the same way, but most people use wireless fire alarm system in finished building. Maybe uh, you are finished uh, your building and you don't want uh, people to start cracking your wall, laying all manner of pipes on the wall, you know, putting trunks and other things. You can go for wireless system, okay? You can go for the wireless system. So, in the wireless system, we can have a smoke detector. We can have a manual core point, that is the brake glass. You can have another smoke detector. We can have uh, the bell. Okay, so let me use triangle as the bell. We can have the bell. 
okay then you can also have your what your panel then there's something called a wireless communicator There's something called a wireless communicator. So all these guys communicate wirelessly. Uh, so this is supposed to be facing. The signal is supposed to be facing here, not up. So we use this guy to configure each of these. Okay, so use them to configure this, then send the feed to your panel. So if any of them is having faults, it's going to come this way to this guy which is your panel sorry panel okay so to your panel so this is a wireless wireless communicator or I can call it a uh, configuration device whatever okay so it's going to come this way to this so in your configuration you are going to configure it in such a way that all these systems works hand in hand okay so you can assign them their addresses and they communicate to this then to the panel so there's another type of uh, wireless which i have done i've not really done this but i know about it but there's another type of wireless which i have done which you can have uh, different devices like different smoke detector so you configure all these guys you configure all of them to be able to communicate to each other so whenever you have a fault in a particular one all of them triggers together okay so they used to come with battery you know so when you have a fault in this particular room it sends signal to all of them and all the whole devices start uh, all the whole devices start making the alarm so they have their own inbuilt uh speaker so you don't need all this it has its own inbuilt speaker which you can produce its own uh sound from inside and uh many many other things okay so I am going to end this class now. This is at eight for uh, eight forty two. So I think I, I think I've tried. I think I've tried to say some things, even though it's not really all. But at least somebody have learned one or two things from today's class. So I'm going to open a room for questions. I'm going to be attending to just uh, four people, two two minutes, to answer your question. Then we close the session. Thank you. So if you raise your hand, I'm going to call you. Just click on the raise hand. And I'm going to call you. So, Mr. Chidera, you have a question? Yes, sir. I, I have to start by saying thank you so much for for the for the knowledge and the listening you've been able to dish out. Right. So my my question is based on the Number one is the wire, like the kind of wire used. Uh, um, even though you say the it has, uh, we can use one point five for one mm. But like, how does the wire look like? Okay. Then the se the second one is the like the market the the zone market values. Like okay, in um, in uh, okay, like in control switch, you have D four, you have you know D D C is depending. So I really want to know the the market values and uh, okay that's my two questions for now so thank you okay sorry the market value you, you mean i don't understand sorry Can you okay, the again? market values i mean like the zone market value okay my question is the 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 zone market values like uh maybe this panel has like the maximum zones it's gonna set is maybe two zones or four zones or something like that. Like if i want to go to the market now uh, if they should ask how many zones do you want you know that uh, yeah. okay okay 
Okay, so uh, your first question is uh, the type of cable. I don't have that on my slide. So maybe after this class, you can just go online and just type fire alarm system cable. It will show you. You used to have a, a, a red coated back. Okay, and also, you also used to have an edge cable inside, which you can use and which is very fine. So just type fire system or fire alarm system cable. You will see it there. Then talking about the zones, talking about the type of zones for you to buy in the market now it depends on you if you have if you have your fire alarm system design you want to install you should know the type of uh, uh, zone uh, I mean zone panel you should buy so if your system is going to contain up to 10 devices 14 devices 20 devices now like i said in conventional conventional can take up to 13 14 depending on the type so if you have an installation where you have up to 20 devices to install instead of going for one zone panel you should go for two zone panel okay so if you have up to 100 devices in conventional to install you should be going for four zone panel so so it is how many devices you want to install in a particular size will determine the zone you will buy I hope I'll. Okay. 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 okay so thank you, sir. So. All right, Mister Skytech. Good. Uh, thank you very much. I'm down here in Ghana. Okay. Um, with the addressable one, I learned the installation has to go by looping. Yeah. Uh, what of if there is a breakage in the first circuit? From the first looping, if the cable had a breakage, that means, to my understanding, that means the rest of the this are going to cut off. Or is there any solution to that one? Yes, sorry, I forgot to mention that when you are doing an, uh, an a loop installation, there's there's an isolation module. There's an isolation module you install in between a certain number of devices okay so if you have if you have up to maybe 100 devices in one loop you can be breaking it into 20 you install the particular uh, module when you when you get another 20 you install the particular module so if you're having fault it's not going to obstruct your whole system it's going to break it down that is the fault is going to stop where that module is being terminated okay so you don't just professional you don't just run all the whole uh, 100 devices you break them with a particular isolation modules just for for protection or something like that yeah thank you very much right. and that one doesn't need anything like uh end of line resistance right? no, no 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 just thank your you normal uh your normal parallel cabling should just do that yeah so wherever you end your looping, that is so it's good to go. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, so uh, thank you guys. I'm going to be ending this for now. Thank you so much for coming. And I'm going to be having a physical class, like a real practical with practical device. But uh, I don't think it's going to be free because we're going to be buying device for this training. And if you also have money to buy your own device when we are going to be doing the class, you should also get one or two devices okay thank you so much and uh we'll talk more in the group thank you thank you very much thank you sir god bless you